Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is Technical Tim here, and I want to thank everyone so much who's been liking and subscribing to my channel, and um, I'd really appreciate it if you gave a thumbs up to this video, and if you guys give, um, if I get 50 likes on one video this week, just one, and I'll probably be sending out like four, um, I'll go live on Saturday before the fights and give away all my picks for free, and um, I do have plan on having a bit of action and those who did buy my picks I don't know I know I don't have much up there yet but trust me I have a plan and I'm kind of waiting out some lines and I'm, I'm gonna be playing so just want to let you guys know but um let's get right to it I'm gonna be talking about UFC 237 and I like to kind of dismiss some fights early in the week and I'll be doing that here um, but I still want to go through them and um, give my analysis but Kind of like I did to, Ch to Chase on that fight, I, um, I just dismissed it early in the week, and I like doing that just so I can focus the rest of my attention to fights that I might be playing. And, um, and it's really important to do that, but the first fight that I'm going to be breaking down is BJ Penn, Clay Guida, and honestly, I don't have that much to say about this. Right now, the current betting odds are... Clay Guida is minus 620, so he has an implied probability. It's it, it he should be. I mean, I mean, I think that's like um I don't know, like 80 something percent. So um he he should be. Um he should be favored heavy because uh, BJ Penn, I mean, he's 40 years old now and he just even before he started aging, he's always had some cardio issues, and Clay Guida's going to just push a pace on him here. I think the easiest fight to kind of, like, compare... I don't think the Ryan Hall fight's good to, like, analyze on this one, because it's just kind of a leg lock submission. That's not Guida's game. Guida's just going to take you down and grind you out. And just so you know, if we go over to Clay Guida, Guida still showed really good cardio against Eric Cook, and he showed a little bit of pop against Lozon. Um, I don't put much stock into this. I, I don't think BJ is going to be subbing Guida, just so you know. Um, I think Guida will be able to stifle any submission attempt by an, a really old BJ Penn. But the fight that I want to kind of focus on is De this Dennis Seaver fight right here. That's kind of like the most um, recent fight we have like, that you can kind of see how this fight's going to go. If you look, BJ's not what he used to be. And BJ really, really slowed down in that fight versus Seaver in the third round. And Guida's going to push a fucking pace. Might put him away late. Um, or he's just going to get, like, a 10-8 round or, or two, <laughs> to be honest. But, um, yeah, eventually, he might not get takedowns right away, Guida. But eventually, when the pace sets in, he's going to dominate. He should be heavily favored. No action on this. BJ's not worth a play, in my opinion. I don't want to play a minus 620 favor, uh, fighter in Clay Guida either. Um, so... Let's dismiss it. Let's not worry about it. Let's move on. Um, and then the next fight that I want to be talking about, and I, I went back and forth on this one. It's Tiago Alves versus Lariano um, Steropoli. And just to give you a brief intro of who Steropoli is, I mean, I know you guys who bet MMA a lot know him, but um, he essentially, he, the only fight he's had in the UFC, I think that was like the... Argentina card. I can't really totally remember, um, but he fought Hector Aldana. And Hector Aldana, just so you know, isn't UFC level. Like he might be in the UFC, but he's a regional level talent. And um, before that, Steropoli looked really bad on tape, and he made a big leap in this Aldana fight. And he actually showed decent output in that fight versus Aldana, and um, and pretty good cardio as well. And it, but it's still hard to know how good he is because, like I said before, remember I talked about um, Spivak last week against Walt Harris? Um, it was hard to tell how good Spivak was because he was beating a bunch of cans, you know? Um, but I would say the Aldana wins probably better than anything Spivak had, so you can kind of tell what Steropoli might be able to do. Um, it looks like he can kind of strike a little bit and hold his own there. And I like the way he throws punches and avoids punches kind of in the pocket with his straight punches. I think that's pretty good. Don't know too much about his ground game or anything like that either um, because these fights were all set, were all long ago and he's made a leap. And, and against Aldana, we didn't really see it. But essentially what I see from him is he looks like he, he's probably UFC level, but 
the thing he seems to do pretty well is what is likely going to be what he needs here against Alves, and that's be able to strike and be able to kind of push a pace and throw some output. If we look at his striking, um, let's where was that? His striking numbers against Hector Aldana, he threw 97 strikes, so he, he did get hit quite a bit, though. But he averaged about 6.47 strikes lined in per minute. He was able to tee off, though, so those numbers are skewed, and it's only one fight. But small, extremely small sample. He showed that he can throw some output. Um, but he also showed in that Aldana fight that he's susceptible to leg kicks. So it's kind of like... The advantages I see for him in this fight is that he can maybe get some output going against Alves and maybe have the better gas tank and more activity late. But I see susceptibility to leg kicks, and I just don't know how good he is. So it's really hard to tell um, because he hasn't fought UFC competition. Like I've said before, it's it's really, really hard to read someone and gauge their, their abilities when they fight in regional level fighters, which Sarah Pulley has. But then if we go to Tiago Alves, if I was forced to play this fight, I would probably play Tiago Alves here because he's actually UFC proven. And I mean, he's had decent, even though he shouldn't have won this fight versus Max Griffin, he still shows he can, you know, compete with UFC comp caliber competition. He, he fought pretty well against Kancheco until the third round, whenever he really gassed in that fight. Um, but let's actually pull that up because that's kind of a point that I want to, um, actually a point that I kind of want to make for this, but, uh, in this fight versus Konchenko where he lost, see, he actually outstruck Konchenko because Konchenko can be criminally low volume at times. So you have to be careful betting Konchenko in the future, <clears throat> but look, nothing really happened in these fights. Like. Alves, nine strikes of 40 and five of 27. So, like, look how not busy Konchenko was. And then Alves really stru outstruck him in round two, and Konchenko wasn't doing anything. And then when Konchenko turned it on, he was able to kind of just, like, break Tiago down and um, and kind of just easily win that third round. I do think Tiago could have got this decision here, but it wasn't really because of what Tiago did. It was because Konchenko wasn't doing anything. Um, but the thing is, I don't think Tiago is going to be able to just like kind of coast in early rounds against Steripoli because I do think Steripoli will throw. But the thing is, I still don't know how good Steripoli is. But what worries me for Alves here is just the cardio issue, even though he, it, he has decent cardio. And if we look, whenever his fight against Max Griffin, um, he ended up winning this fight, but Max Griffin gasses heavily, so Alves wasn't really pushed to a pace there. So it looked like his cardio was like okay against Max Griffin, but he really wasn't pushed. And against Konchenko, he really slowed down when Konchenko just started turning it on. And Steropoli will at least bring the fight to you. So usually, you guys know me, I tend to play the UFC veteran in this situation all the time, but what is making me hesitant on playing Alves and why I'm gonna this is a stay away by the way I'm not playing this fight. I don't want to play Steropoli. He's too unproven and I don't want to play Alves because Usually when you bet the UFC um, the, the UFC level fighter it's because they have a lot of different ways to win because the other guy's so Unproven in many areas, but the thing is Steropoli did show he can kind of it looks like he could probably compete with Tiago in a pure striking fight. And Tiago's willing to just have an at range and just kind of like a whatever kickboxing fight. Like Tiago will grapple at times, but he tends to not to. Um, so if if like Tiago had more depth to his game, I think it's more likely he would there's it's more likely that he would just win this fight because Steropoli's so unproven in other areas. So if he like grappled and did more than just striking, I'd be more willing to play him. Um so that's kind of like why I'm hesitant on not on actually not playing the UFC veteran here and the UFC proven fighters just because Alves just doesn't have a lot of um tools to kind of take advantage of a guy who might have holes in his game, if that makes sense. Sorry I'm rambling here. I hope that makes sense. But the thing with like, I don't know, like a fighter like Brandon Davis against, um, I, don't, I don't know, just like, you can pick another example, like uh, Joanne Calderwood versus Lipsky. 
Joanne Calderwood shows she can strike and she will grapple at times too. She actually grapples more than you would think. So like that's more of a comfortable bet that I would I would rather side with the UFC proven fighter. Just someone who will actually test the uh, unproven fighter in other areas. So that's kind of why I'm hesitant playing Alves here. There's just not that much depth to his game. And I am afraid that Steropoli could maybe outlast him late. But then another reason I don't want to play Steropoli is because he's unproven and because of the hometown bias here, guys. This is a Brazil card. Get fucking used to it. If you play non-local fighters in Brazil, you're going to get fucked at some point. So you have to be really careful. But the odds right now are... Um... Where are they? Okay, they're minus. They're about dead even, and it's like I would probably say Alves is more likely to win here, but it's hard for me to confidently put like like I like having like a like a eight to ten percent advantage over the books, and it's hard for me to put him around like the implied probability here is like fifty two percent, and it's hard for me to put him over sixty percent here. It, it just is because. Confidently. Um, he, he may be there because Steropoli is so unproven, but I just don't know for sure. So it'd be a little guesswork. So I, I like to just kind of know. I like to be more precise on being able to calculate the odds and then take advantage on the bookies there. But this one, it's just kind of hard to know. And Steropoli has shown against a somewhat UFC level fighter in Aldana that he can strike a little bit and play that kind of fight that Alves likes to play. So it's like, let's not overthink this one. Let's not sweat it. Alves is probably the better play, but I think it, I don't think it's worth playing either guy. And let's move on to other fights where we can find value. So that's kind of my, um, it's kind of my breakdown on this one. Um, I do think Alves could get success with body kicks if he starts pushing Steropoli backwards too. I do think that. And the leg kicks will probably be there for him, but Sorry, that's everything, but I, it, as you can see, I'm still kind of like thinking out loud on this fight because I was so torn, and the fact if you have to think about a fight really long, you should probably just stay away from it and go to the fights where you have confident reads right away. So um, no play here, no play on BJ or Guida either. Don't want to play a juiced favorite in Guida. Don't want to play a 40-year-old in BJ Penn who has no gas tank. So stay away from both of these fights. Sorry that both of these are stayaways, but I'll be sending out videos throughout the week that will give you guys some plays that I'm quite, quite confident in. So um, um, give the video a thumbs up, and thanks for listening. I really enjoy talking to you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.